So it's my great pleasure and privilege to um, introduce Diana Hunter. Diana is a, a longtime friend and colleague and she has been instrumental in sharing this technology and supporting people in being successful with this technology for decades now. Um, she's a real foundational leader for our region and internationally. We, um, we do so many things that people anywhere in the globe can benefit from. Now, just Diana's background, she has a very vast background in natural medicine. She started her career as an allied health professional and was educated in the fundamentals of medicine and medical science at Cumberland College of Health Sciences in Sydney. She first learned about nutrition and health while recovering from her own personal health challenge and has studied nutritional health over the last 30 years. She has a passion for educating and supporting others and experiencing optimal well-being. And I know, you know, I'm, I'm privileged. I get um, a direct line to Diana for advice on my health and wellness challenges as the the ebbs and flows of life happen. So Diana, thank you so much for being willing to stand up and share this. So I'll just go off camera. Um, just call me at any time. Thank you, Sharon, for that warm introduction and welcome everybody. I gather if you've joined us for this presentation, you have an interest in having healthy, balanced hormonal system and all that delivers into our general well-being. And as Sharon said there earlier, really, this presentation is about taking the power back in our hands. If something goes out of balance in our health, in our hormonal system, there's things we can do, choices we can make, uh, things we can integrate in our life in terms of lifestyle changes and better nutrition um, that really can make a difference. So we're focusing on the hormonal system. So we'll get straight into it here if I can get this to progress. Hmm. Here we go. So this is a general overview of our hormonal system. And in science, it's called the endocrine system. And uh, we, we have a diagram here of the male and the female hormonal system. And you can see here, Throughout our bodies uh, is a range of glands, and I'm sure you'll be familiar with many of them, the thyroid gland, our adrenal gland, the ovaries, the pituitary. So we, what happens is these glands excrete hormones into the bloodstream, and uh, those hormones travel around our body to targeted areas. Now, you may or may not be aware that we have around 87 major hormones circulating in our body. Only 15 of those, or approximately 15, are related to sexual and reproductive function. And only two of them are different in male and female. The ovaries, of course, is uh, the estrogen and progesterone. And uh, in the male, the testes uh, produce the testosterone, though, which is in the aldosterone group. So, uh, those are the only two are different. So uh, we are all hormonal all of the time. And the role of our hormonal si system is to keep things in balance. In science, they call it uh, establishing homeostasis or a balance within the um, bodily systems. So we, we tend to notice when our hormones are out of balance, we start getting a range of sim sis, uh, symptoms and that's when we notice that things have gone out of whack. And here's some examples of the kind of symptoms or signs you might have that your hormones are out of balance. It might affect our mood. Uh, we might have irritability or not feel as happy. Our mood swings, perhaps even depression in some cases. Sometimes sleep can be affected. Interrupted sleep, inability to sleep. Our hunger mechanism is regulated by hormones. So uh, the ability to you know, stabilize that sense of uh, satisfaction. Our me metabolism in general is modified by, by the hormonal system. Inflammation um, is managed in part by hormonal, hormonal system. And body temperature, blood pressure, all these things are balanced uh, through the hormonal action within our body. So today uh, I'm going to be covering the very basics of our hormonal system. Hormonal system 101. And then what we can do to do to support hormonal balance. And that of course translates to 
you know, having better energy, having a better mood, feeling happier, lighter, improving sleep quality and quantity, uh, strengthening our immune system. Our uh, hormones do relate also to our immune system. And of course, our bones. Our bone health has been highlighted in the media quite a bit over the last decade. And definitely our hormones are related to bone density. I'll be covering that in a little bit more detail uh, this morning. How to improve, you know, it will also help with our memory, brain function. And the other area is healthy fat metabolism, healthy fat and cholesterol levels. And again, you hear a lot about cholesterol in the media uh, in medical science over the last decade or so. So in our body, we have I guess two main bases of hormones. We have the steroid hormones, which I'm going to be covering more detail here, uh, which are fat or lipid based. And then another category or general base of hormones are amino acid or protein based. And I'll be addressing those a little bit later in the presentation. But the focus here is on the steroid hormone production. And you can, this is a flow chart of that production. And you can see here many hormones that you may be familiar with, testosterone, estrogen, the cortisone, the progesterone. And what's significant is that these hormones are produced in what science calls a, calls a hormonal cascade. The body converts one hormone to another. The other standout here is, or, or thing to think about, is our hormones, like all elements within our body, is based in 100% nutrition. And with our hormones, the, the base nutrition for the steroid hormones is cholesterol. And of course, cholesterol has been quite demonized uh, in our media, and, but it, yet it is vital building block for healthy steroid hormone production. It's the base, the building block base. Uh, the other thing to note here that phytosterols, now phytosterols are nutrients from plants that uh, we can take into our body and they, they also act as food for hormones and food for this steroid hormone production. I'll be covering a little bit more about that as we go along. There's two main pathways in the steroid hormone. We've got the DHEA pathway, which I'll be focusing on in a moment, and we have the progesterone pathway. And the other thing to take note of is that we replenish our hormones in our sleep. So in our sleep, we build up a pool, we build up our bank of hormones, and the quantity and the quality of our sleep then affects our hormones hormonal production and therefore our energy levels, our immunity, our appetite control, and our ability to cope with the stresses of the following day. Sleep's very, very important. And you can see here also the kind of uh, influences these hormones have within our body. Down the bottom here, male and female development, uh, sexual function, bone maintenance, inflammation, uh, maintenance, balance of blood pressure and balance of blood sugar, et cetera, et cetera. So these hormones govern a whole range of uh, bodily functions. So I'd like to focus on the phytosterols for a moment. These are food for our hormones that we're meant to be getting in our daily diet as the basis, as the beginning or the start, starting point of this whole cascade of hormonal production. They're very structurally similar to cholesterol and they used to be abundant. In our ancestral diet, they had very high phytosterol content in their diet and some science is showing up to one gram a day, which is a lot. And yet in our typical modern diet that's been assessed, it's relatively low in this phytosterol content, you know, as little as a quarter of our ancestral diet. And yet they're vital for uh, this hormonal cascade, this hormonal production. So uh, adding, um, finding a way to increase these in our, in our diet can you know, be incredibly supportive for our hormonal balance. And I have uh, invited to our presentation today several guest speakers, and I'd like to invite 
our first guest speaker, Sue Pelle. So if you can just put on your um, video. Thank you, Sue. Uh, because I know Sue <coughs> has um, added some of these phytosterols and other nutrients in her diet. And she's going to share with us, you know, what happened for her, what happened in her well-being uh, when she um, added this in. So over to you, Sue. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Diana. When I was uh, preparing this, I was trying to think of a way best to best describe PLUS because I've used a lot of the Manatech products and it is very different. So my analogy came to a cup of coffee where, you know, you can either boil a kettle and make an instant cup of coffee or you could actually get one of those nice real coffees that's got the right texture, the right temperature of milk. And when you drink it, you sort of get that velvety flavour through um, as the process. And so you've got two ways of choosing to do life, really. Just doing it the old way with a cup of, you know, with a, a kettle and just managing as it is, or you could just have those little added benefits, enjoying life and enjoying the experience. And that's plus for me. So basically I started the products about 20 years ago. Um, the, the first time I really got to see was with my own stuff with IVF. I noticed I wasn't going up and down on those real big roller coaster road that you would expect to experience. I also found that, you know, I was hospitalised. I ended up giving birth to twins, but at that time I was hospitalised and I ended up like, uh, taking quite significant amounts of their products combined and I was able to lower a lot of the blood tests or the work that was um, appearing at the time. And the doctors were mystified as to what was going on and why I wasn't continuing in the way that I had. But it also gave me the ability to stay that little bit longer with twins because it was about 28 weeks and I ended up making it to 34, 35 weeks which I'm really grateful for because that, that obviously meant that the kids got the benefits of staying in the womb longer and not being born premature. So for me, that was great. Um, the other thing, if we go, if we go to now, uh, which is probably the most important thing, we have a 12 year old and two nine year olds and they're going through their hormonal experiences. And it's become like, there was a day that I walked into their kid's office where they do all their homework and stuff. And it was just unbelievable watching them, the way that they were integrating with one another and talking and speak and enjoying each other. And it was sort of the comment whether we asked ourselves, you know, have you guys taken your plus? Because it's not typically like that. And they had, they were yelled out, yeah, we did the night before. But we can watch with our 12 uh, year old, just that he knows and he, he can monitor it as can I old, sort of doing those hormonal you know, roller coasters and, and starting puberty and stuff like that, which really, I've been able to work for myself what my good dose is, which is eight plus a day to keep me managed and in tow and, and well balanced and functioning well. So for me, that's great. But I also think it gives them the opportunity to take charge of their own lives at such a young age and not necessarily experience all those um, highs and lows that adolescent brings on. So I guess just as a family, you know, we prioritise it and we're really grateful for the product. Thank you, Sue. I mean, it's such a great example, you know, of having that nutritional support into major life choices like pregnancy and taking care of yeah. and optimising your children's well-being. So I'm sure that's um, a benefit to many of our listeners. Thank you, Sue. No worries at all. Thanks, Diana. So I was talking, we've been, we're talking about the steroid hormone uh, pathway and uh, I would like to focus for a moment on this DHEA pathway. Now, the DHEA is often known as the fountain of youth. It's also called the mother hormone. It's responsible for the production, for the cascade of 50 other hormones. And you can see testosterone and estrogen are part of that um, chain of events. Now, DHEA, it peaks in production in, in about our mid-20s, and then it has a slow decline into old age. And you can see that uh, decline here on this chart. So that on average, uh, by the time women are 50 years old, they have 50% of their DHEA production that they had in their mid-20s and men only 43%. And by the time women are 70, it's down to about a third, and for men, it's down to about a quarter. And yet, um, good healthy amounts of DHEA are linked to the maintenance of youthfulness, to being able to maintain good mood and a, a good memory, 
to maintain healthy bone density, so important. And also it, it, it affects uh, being able to have healthy fat metabolism. So anything we can do to strengthen and support nutritionally the production of DHEA is of tremendous value to our overall well, well um, being. Uh, and just of note here that DHEA is depleted in its production by chronic stress. And I don't know anyone who's not under some level of stress in our modern day. And also by a high GI diet. That's a diet where you're eating uh, nutrients or food that's spiking your blood sugar, that's causing your blood sugar to spike. And it, it causes an inflammatory response in the body and it affects this DHEA um, cascade. So uh, making better dietary choices can support uh, healthy DHEA production. Now a focus on uh, women for a moment. So estrogen and progesterone are important for reproductive development and fertility in women. They're actually produced in the egg follicles in our ovaries. And if women are suffering the symptoms of you know, menstrual issues, like mood swings, irritability, you know, even in, in its worst form, depression, um, severe pain, that can be an indication that the estrogen uh, uh, hormone is out of balance. It's, it's too high. It's called estrogen dominance. Um, if we're thinking ahead towards menopause, at that time we stop our egg production or we run out of eggs. And yet um, the eggs are where we produce the estrogen and progesterone. So we're no longer able to use that method for producing these hormones. And as a result, if these hormones drop too low, women start to experience these hot flushes, memory problems, mood swings. Uh, and then we have to be able to rely on our backup system. Now our backup system for producing estrogen and progesterone once the ovaries are no longer functioning in that way is the DHEA pathway. So this is why it is so significant, um, particularly in women uh, for a healthy hormonal ba balance. So again, we go back to you know, what nutritional building blocks, what lifestyle choices can we make to really support this hormonal cascade? Talking about bone health, uh, here's a graphic of a healthy bone on the left, healthy bone structure. It has, you know, it looks like it has strength and integrity, doesn't it? And on the right, we have a bone that's, you know, got holes through it, it it's lost its structural integrity. This is an osteoporotic bone, and you, you can imagine how easy it would be for that bone to fracture and to break. So in regard to bone density, I want to take again a moment to talk about what, I, what we call the calcium myth. So there's a lot of information out there, you know, must have a lot of calcium once you hit menopause. And it's true, we do need a healthy amount of vitamins and minerals in our diet, calcium, magnesium, and a whole range of minerals to support overall health and definitely bone density. But the maintenance of bone is actually related to our hormones. And that's why it becomes an issue as we age and our hormones change. It, it starts to affect our bone density. Progesterone is essential for building bone in the body. And adequate estrogen is essential for maintaining the bone that's already established. So again, important to maintain uh, the nutritional basis of this, particularly as we age. For men, uh, the statistics aren't that much better for men in regard to bone density and reproductive health in um, our modern world, modern world. And here's just a couple of statistics. 30% of 65 year old men have lower than normal testosterone. And that again is produced in the testes in men. And low testosterone can translate to bone thinning in men, low sex drive, you know, hair loss, which can be a concern to a lot of men and reduced muscle mass. You know, you'll see as men age, they have less muscular strength. And 
the facts are that one in three men over 60 are at uh, risk of having a fracture and that the fracture is actually a greater risk than prostate cancer. And we're hearing a lot about prostate cancer in the media as well. The other interesting stat, and uh, this was brought forward in the media in the last couple of days, is that in Australia, 50% of infertility in couples is related to the male, either primarily or having a significant factor in that infertility in that couple. And the latest research is that this trend is related to the modern diet or the poor nutrition in the modern diet. So again, pointing to lifestyle and nutritional factors where you know, the choices that we can make to really make a difference. For men in regard to the prostate, its function, so it's not producing estrogen and androgens, but its function is influenced by estrogen and androgens. Um, our 30% of 30-year-old Western men already have some swelling, but by the time they're in their 80s, nearly 100% of men have this swelling of the prostate or benign prostatic hypertrophy, they call it, in um, medicine. And this is what causes men to be getting up on a regular basis at night to go to the toilet because the enlarged prostate is putting pressure on their bladder. And unfortunately, uh, this swelling... Um, and uh, inflammation of the prostate can et end up leading to, or being a risk factor to, the, to leading to cancer. And yet 75% of prostate cancers are known to um, have been prevented um, or impacted in a beneficial way with dietary and lifestyle choices. So, I also wanted to point out that there's certain implications. We're, we're thinking about, or we're looking at this hormonal production, this hormonal cascade. It's all interrelated and there's a feedback loop that happens. So if uh, there's increase of hormone down here, then that is communicated all the way back up the chain saying, okay, I need to modulate here. It's a two way street with our hormones. So if you could consider for a moment, if you're adding an artificial hormone down in this area down here, that's having an impact on the entire hormonal cascade. So again, far better, just like in Sue's story there, to be giving the nutritional building blocks for the hormones to be able to modulate and balance themselves, if at all possible. Um, that's a better way to go. So what are the nutrients that we can be adding into our diet to support our hormones and our health? I'm going to be covering four major categories in this presentation. The phytosterols, which are food for the hormones. Our omega-3 fatty acids, which are our fish oils, um, usually is the richest source of that. There are some plant sources, but uh, fish oil by far is the richest source. Uh, vitamins and minerals support a whole range of biological function, including the production of hormones, particularly our B vitamins and magnesium for hormonal production. And also a, a completely unique category of nutrients called the nutritional glycans. But before I get to that, if we're going to be talking about nutritional supplementation, we really need to think about the quality of our food. Uh, and I rarely get any arguments these days that our food is declined in nutritional content that our fruit and veg aren't what they used to be. And there's several factors behind this. You know, growing our produce over and over on the same soil without adequate rep replenishment of the broad spectrum of nutrition that needs to be in the soil if it's going to be in the produce. We're picking our produce green before it's ripened on the vine uh, or on the plant. This severely depletes the nutritional content. And then we're picking it and transporting it long distances. We're over-processing it. And all of this is leading to more and more decline and depletion in the nutritional value. Here's just one example on this slide. Um, two peaches in 1951 provided uh, the adequate or the recommended daily amount of vitamin A. But by 2002, about 50 years later, it was 53 peaches that you need to eat to get the same amount of vitamin A. I mean, that's a stunning example. Now, I also wanted to just float, you know, the idea of other pressures that we have 
on our hormones in our modern age. And that is through what is known as endocrine, endocrine disruptors. These are chemicals that mimic hormones or block hormones at their receptor sites and interfere with the natural hormone production within our body. And they're in our everyday man-made products. We've got chemicals, I've got some of them listed here, some pharmaceuticals uh, act as endocrine disruptors, plastics, plasticizers such as BPA, and we're seeing now on many plastic products free of BPA. I'm sure you've seen that. And that's because it's been identified as what they call a xenohormone. It mimics hormone and interfe interferes with um, the sexual hormone production. Artificial perfumes, they also confuse our natural hormones. They, they can um, get into our system and block the natural hormones. And they also confuse the scent. Our body is designed in nature to respond to scent and that scent can confuse the hormonal system. So again, you know, be conscious of using artificial perfumes. Better, far better to go the natural route and I'll give you some examples later. So we have these, this impact on our health, the, the lack of nutrition and also um, these endocrine disruptors putting pressure on our hormonal production. I just wanted to give you a couple of more studies in regard to the depletion of nutrition in our food. There was a, a, a research study done on antioxidants alone back in 1995 that showed that, you know, well, based on the amount of uh, antioxidants in those fruit and veg, we'll recommend that our general population consume five to seven fruit and vegetables a day. I'm sure you've heard of those recommendations. Well, those same studies were repeated about 17 years later. And the recommendations based on those studies were doubled, recommending the population eat seven to 14 fruits and vegetables a day. And that's ludicrous. Who would do that or could do that or could afford to do that? Studies on vitamins back in 2002, based on studies into vitamin and mineral, co uh, vitamin content, I should say, in the average adult diet. Based on that, the American Medical Association came forward and they're a very conservative uh, medical body and they came forward and said, pending strong evidence of effectiveness, effectiveness of randomized trials, it appears prudent for all adults to take vitamin supplements. And that's a huge statement. So the medical profession is already recommending it. And you can see if you did a bit of a Google search, you'll, you'll start to see that leading health institutions are adding nutritional supplements to their food pyramid. And many of my friends are very happy that wine is also included there. So if we're going to supplement, if you accept that, you know, well, given our current diet and the pressures on our hormonal health and our general health, yes, I do need to supplement. And many people have accepted this and are choosing to supplement. It's important to be aware that many supplements on the market are actually synthetically manufactured. They're not from food and plant sources the way nature intended. So wherever possible, it's by beware. Look for supplements that are food source, that are backed by science. You know, there's some scientific proof that they're effective and some level of evidence that they're the highest quality possible and they're safe when you put them in your body. And it's at this point that um, I'm proud to introduce to you the company Manatech, if you don't already know about them. They're an international research and development company. They're a 25-year-old company now, and they specialise in food-derived nutritional supplements. Wherever science allows, they produce their supplements from food and plant sources. So they're guaranteed, there's no impurities, they're, they have the safety monitoring equal to a pharmaceutical company, and they have a multi-stage quality control program. So you're assured that the quality of these nutritional supplements um, is, is safe. And not only that, they have invested over $50 million in scientific research over the last couple of decades. You know, assuring you when you put these nutrients in your body, you know, they're going to make a difference. And you've heard one of those stories um, already, and uh, we have another, another couple of guests to share their story with you. So I'd like to start with 
their phytosterol supplement. It's called Plus, and this has a 25-year track record. This was the very first supplement that Manatech delivered uh, to the marketplace, and it's still one of their biggest um, sellers, and I think that says a lot. It contains a high concentration of these plant sterols, and it's from the Mexican wild yam. And it acts as a hormone modulator. It's giving your body the food to balance hormones. There's benefits in breast, prostate, bone, and colon health, uh, support to the immune nervous system and cardiovascular system. And also it's known to provide relief from you know, menstrual problems. So enough of me for a moment. Uh, I'd like to invite our ne next guest speaker. And we have... Uh, I believe we have Jan Willisey there. So Jan, I'm going to, uh, I need to figure out how to bring you forward. Here we are. So start video. Unmute. Nope, that didn't work. Oh, Jan, you have to, oh, yep, there you are. And you need to unmute yourself. Okay. Perfect. Okay. Thank you, Jan. Thanks, Diana. Oh my goodness, so much information. Um, I just realised that my DHEA is, because um, I'm over 70, I'm thinking of my DHEA would have been really impacted by all of this. But many years ago, I was looking for something natural for my menopausal problems. And um, these included hot flushes, I um, was unable to sleep, uh, mood swings, and the latter made me just feel cranky all the time over very small things. And I'd taken HRT for 12 years without any great um, improvement. And uh, so I was introduced to um, nutritional um, glycans by a physio friend. And... Um, and within five weeks, like I was sleeping better, I was feeling rested, um, the fl hot, hot flushes had eased, um, and I was just a happier person. Um, and at the same time, I had swollen, painful joints in my hands, and the pain eased. And I just could not believe that I had such um, results from that. And recently, I, uh, one of my customers had run out of PLUS and so I gave her my last bottle of PLUS and I was out of it for about three days and I just felt so horrible and I thought I'm never ever going to run out of PLUS. I'm always going to have to have, you know, a spare bottle in the, in the cupboard, which I do now. But, um, and I've continued taking all of these products um, the phytosterols, the omega-3 vitamins and minerals and the nutritional glycans. And I just feel on top of the world. Thanks, Diana. Thank you, Jen. Thank you for um, coming on board and sharing your story. I know that, you know, it can be a brave thing to put your face forward and say, well, this is what happened for me. Um, but I know a lot of um, people who are well through menopause um, can, will relate to your story and benefit from hearing, um, you know, what choices you've made and what difference it's made. So thank you for, for stepping up and um, sharing your story. You're welcome. So here we go, I'll just. Uh, all right. I think we're good there. Oops. Sorry, jump forward a bit. So, Jan mentioned there that she uh, has utilised a whole range of nutrients in, a, in addition to the phytosterols. Uh, and one of those is the omega-3 fatty acids. So omega-3s, as I mentioned earlier, the, the most richest source of this in nature is fish. And uh, they support a whole range of functions in the body, including for our brain, our cardiovascular health, balance of um, healthy fat levels within our, our, our vascular system, immune health. And in addition, this particular product has vitamin D, which is also known uh, in conjunction to support with bone health. And of course, these omega-3 fatty acids 
are those building blocks for the steroid hormone, the fatty acid um, based uh, hormonal cascade. And you can see here in this chart over on the right that our modern diet is depleted and out of balance uh, in regard to omega-3 fatty acids. Our ancestral diet used to have a healthy balance of omega-6s and omega-3s, but our modern diet has gone way out of whack. Uh, there's a depletion in omega-3s and farm, farmed fish, unfortunately, tends to be low in omega-3s. It's that a fish that are in the, out in the um, natural ocean um, un, un, uh, not penned, are able to circulate through the ocean, the ones that have the healthy amount of omega-3s. And we've had this increase in omega-6s in our diet through plant uh, vegetable oils. And so it's important that you know, we conscious what happens with the vegetable oils, they can cause uh, inflammatory process in the body, and especially when the balance uh, gets out of whack like this. So adding a form of um, omega-3 fatty acids really support our overall well-being as well as our hormonal balance. The next uh, nutritional category to consider adding in is the vitamins and minerals. Now, vitamins and minerals support a whole range of healthy functions. You can see some of them listed here um, related to the hormonal um, Hormonal function would be the metabolic rate, our energy levels, our immune system, um, our bones and teeth and hair, etc. And uh, it has a whole range of uh, vitamins and minerals in this particular product, but it also has enhanced B vitamins. And as I mentioned earlier, the B vitamins, particularly B6, is very helpful uh, for, for the production of hormones, as is magnesium. And this product has the correct balance of cows, both calcium of course, which we need for our bone support and magnesium. And it's known to strengthen bone and tissue in both the young and elderly. The other thing that's uh, significant about this product, it's formulated in you know, what I'll call a food matrix. There's a range of plant nutrients in there that enhance uh, the absorption of the vitamin mineral content of this product. I want to spend some time now on this category of nutritional glycans that I mentioned earlier and that Jan mentioned in her personal story. Now, nutritional glycans are a completely unique category of nutrition and they're being considered in science as the missing link. And they're all about our cells being able to communicate with each other. This here on the on graphic here is a, is a picture or graphic picture of a cell. And this here represents the cell membrane. And you can see these antenna-like structures that poke up through the cell surface. These are made up of either a protein chain with a sugar attached or amino, uh, a, a fatty acid with a pro, uh, sugar chain attached. They're called glyco glycoproteins, which is the protein sugar combination, or glycolipids, which is the fatty acid glycan um, structure. Now, what happens is the cells rub up against each other and use these antennae to pass information like a coded language. I call it cellular braille. Of the 200 carbohydrates known in nature, only eight of them are known to have this communication function. And they're responsible for the communication of all structure and all function in the body. Everything is communicated within our system via these glycan cell surface receptors, including the makeup of hormones and the communication of hormones. So if you're talking about body regulation, you're, you're involving the hormonal system, regulation of body temperature, regulation of blood pressure, if you're talking about support, you know, I'm extending myself, I need extra support here. That's our hormonal production is involved there. And identification in our immune system uh, is communicated by these glycan structures. And again, the hormones are involved in our immune system or our immune function. So, well, how important are they? Well, Here's just a few examples. We're talking about cell-to-cell -cell communication. 
The fertilization process is a cell to cell communication process between the sperm and the ovum. That is in, that what happens there is the glycan structures on the cell surfaces are communicating in, and that's how fertilization um, occurs. If we're talking about immunity and development, if our human mother's breast milk contains five of the eight nutritional glycans. It's the richest food source on our planet. No one food on the entire planet has all these um, glycans within it. But mother's, human mother's breast milk has five. And I believe that says a lot uh, in regard to how important these nutritional glycans are for um, human development and particularly human immunity. Because we know now that um, babies that have been breastfed have a stronger long-term um, immune system. Now, if we're talking specifically about our hormonal system, some hormones in and of themselves are glycoprotein. So they're a glycone structure bonded with a protein. And this is where I come back to this other base of hormones within our body, our amino acid base, which is a protein, but they're connected with a glycan. So just a couple of examples here. Thyroid stimulating hormone is in and of itself a glycoprotein. So how many people do you know these days that need support with their thyroid hormones? Luteinizing hormone, that's the hormone um, that stimulates ovulation in women. It is a glycoprotein. How many women do you know that are wanting you know, good, uh, healthy hormonal system so that they can become pregnant? So they need um, good communication of their luteinizing hormone. And then one other example, human chorionic gonadotropin, you don't need to remember that, but that is the hormone that's produced by the placenta once a woman's pregnant. There's a unique hormone that's produced that supports a healthy pregnancy in a whole range of ways. It is a glycoprotein. So I think you're getting the picture of how important these glycans are in our diet in relation to hormonal production and cellular communication. And I would like uh, to introduce you to a product called Ambrotose. And it is the only plant-based supplement of these eight known nutritional glycans that's available worldwide today. It has a 22-year proven track record and it truly is this foundation for cellular communication within the body. And over those years, there's been you know, hundreds, thousands of people benefit from adding these nutritional glycans to your diet. But um, as I said, the Manatech are a science company and they've done the science uh, establishing when you add these nutritional glycans to your diet, these kinds of benefits are what people will experience. Im improvement in their immune system, uh, cellular communication, brain function, memory, mood, concentration, support to the digestive health. Uh, but again, enough of me, I'd like to take another break and uh, ask for Sharon Whiteman to come forward and share her personal story of adding uh, these range of nutritionals into her diet. And thank you, Sharon, uh, for taking time to share your story today. Thank you, Dan. It's, it's my pleasure and privilege. And um, you can't see this because you're busy educating us all, but um, there's so much gratitude in the chat for this education that you're offering and the information. It really empowers us. And I've been um, taking the Manatech nutrients for over 20 years now. I was first started because I had a very chronically fatiguey type of situation. And one of the first things I noticed with PLUS is that I started to feel like I was in charge of my self. I went from feeling like I was this little ship on the sea with no sail or no rudder, like just whatever hit me, hit me and it hit me bad. And I started to feel more like I was in control. I could choose, choose my emotional reactions to my life and, and my mood lifted. Um, I also, I guess because I had the longevity of being able to play and learn about my body with this nutrient, is that I've gone from you know, using it, noticing changes with PMS in my menstrual cycle all the way through to successfully navigating menopause. Very glad to be on the other side of all of that. Sorry to all of the young women listening today. But yeah, I had a, a, a lifetime history of, of bad menstrual pain and symptoms. Um, I had multiple complications, endometriosis, 
um, fibroids, all kinds of things. And it gave me really bad symptoms. And sadly, and it's only been of recent t- times in my experience, you know, they used to just say grin and bear it and, you know, take some painkillers and this is just normal. You're a woman. And we now know that there's a lot of irregularities and that we can do something to really mediate those symptoms and and plus really assisted me with that it just it it gave me again another tool to put in my own hands um, to be able to have a better quality of life in that area and then with menopause I was so impressed because you know I use just varying amounts plus depending on how that process was happening in my body and I may you know I could use it to modulate my symptoms like hot flushes and um, it it just was miraculous for me Um, I won't go a day without it um, I, I depend on it. It's one of those things like I could really identify with what Jan said. It's not the thing you want to run out of in your cupboard and our whole family uses it. And it makes, for, I can tell the difference. So my kids haven't taken theirs. I'm right now I'm in the process of not being the deliverer of all nutrition. I'm teaching them to understand the different feelings they have in their body and when they can feel what it feels like when they've forgotten their plus and what it feels like when they have it so that they're more in control and in charge of their own well-being. So, you know, to me, it's just a priceless blessing for myself. It has been, um, I guess, with a background in nursing. I was a critical care, you know, clinical nurse specialist in critical care for 20 years. And I'm so grateful that I, I learned to embrace a, a broader way to look after my health and well-being than only just going to the doctor in the way I was educated. So thank you, Diana. It's been really important to me to be able to have these nutrients. Thank you, Sharon. And um, I think your story, you know, is a great example of someone with complex health situation, just making some dietary changes or additions can make a big difference you know can really improve quality of life um in a in a significant and rewarding way so thank you i'm sure that's benefit again our listeners pleasure diana so uh, in i'm starting to bring this to a close but i wanted to highlight this is a pilot study uh that was done over a 14 year uh time span you know There's a lack of a real scientific, uh, broad scientific study in um, nutritionals, but this is one that's a standout that I wanted to share. So this is Dr. Gil Katz, and he did a study of people taking these glycan, uh, nutritional glycans together with uh, some some of these other nutritionals, where he took blood tests and over 8,000 DEXA scans. So a DEXA scan is the only true scientific measure of tracking bone density. If you go to the x-ray department and have your bone density done, it's usually a DEXA scan. And so he did these tests over a 14 year period, tracking people who are taking the the glyconutritional plant polysaccharide supplements, which is the nutritional glycans. And these were the results that he discovered over that time span. An improvement in bone strength, uh, reduction of excess body fat, uh, improvement in lean muscle mass, uh, improvement in maintenance of healthy cholesterol levels and improved quality of life, and also an improvement in immune health. So just some indications there in that pilot study of the kind of lifestyle and health benefits from you know, adding um, good quality nutritional products, you know, into your daily diet regime. Also, uh, in addition to a balanced, healthy diet, intelligent supplementation, choosing that low glycemic diet, you know, eating foods that keep your blood sugar on even even keel, that don't spike your blood sugar and put pressure on your pancreas, which is also um, one of your endocrine glands. Choosing a healthy fat balance, you know, adding in omega-3s and reducing those vegetable oils, eating healthy fat, saturated fat in in um, balanced way is health giving to your body. You, you, your body's using it as building blocks um, for hormone and other, um, other metabolic processes. I mean, these are things that you'll hear from any, anyone recommending a healthy balanced life, making sure you have exercise. For bone density, it's been shown that resistance exercise is particularly beneficial, like yoga, where you're pushing up against your body or weight gym. 
those are the kinds of resistance exercises that help with bone density in combination with a good diet. Reducing stress. Stress puts tremendous pressure on our health in general, but definitely on our hormonal production. And increasing joy. Whatever you can do to stimulate those feel-good hormones is going to be great for you. Increasing sunlight exposure. Our body depends on sunlight for the production of some significant hormones and also um, dependent on dark for being able to sleep and have good quality and quantity sleep. So our body responds to light and dark. Um, reducing those chemical and perfume exposures, maybe using essential oils, which are health giving for the body for your perfume and reducing plastic use and exposure, um, finding ways to um, store your food um, in or, or purchase products that haven't been stored in plastic so much or taking the plastic off and put them, putting them in non-plastic storage to reducing that plastic exposure or choosing BPA-free plastic wherever possible. So uh, bringing this to a close, and I can't do that without highlighting uh, this program that Manatech have in place. I call it Nourish Yourself, Nourish Your Child. Program. They call it the M5M Foundation. And what this is, is when our customers purchase product on a monthly basis, the company on your behalf provides nutritional supplement to a malnourished child somewhere in the world, supporting their, their, their longevity, their vitality, um, their thriving. And here's just a couple of examples. We've got um, Aura on the left and Ingrid in the right. You can see the transformation that's happened in their lives over you know, a six month to a one year period by having these nutrients delivered um, into their life. And what happens is the company provides a, a nutritional broad spectrum, plant-based nutritional powder uh, to, their, to their feeding program, wherever they're receiving their food from, it's added into their food on a daily basis. And you, you can see how much uh, vitality and hope uh, has been returned into their life. So our customers, you know, feel good about when they're taking care of their own health, they're also taking care of a child somewhere around the world. So I hope I've been able to impart to you the benefits of uh, taking care of your, your hormonal health and what that delivers into your overall um, health and well-being. You know, Manatech really have put together the balance of science and nature to offer, offer us nutritional choices that provide those foundational building blocks for our overall health and definitely for our hormonal well-being. So uh, I do uh, encourage you to get back to the person that invited you to this webinar and have a chat with them about you know, what choices would most benefit you in your situation. So with that, uh, thank you. And I'll hand back to Sharon. Diana, uh, you've blessed so many people, and this is a gift that's going to keep on giving. Uh, we really do need to hand the power back to the people in regards to our health and well-being. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I thank you and acknowledge all of you for uh, giving some of your Saturday morning or whenever you happen to be reviewing this. Uh, next week, we'll be focusing on sporting wellness. We have James Hannon, who's one of our, he's an elite athlete, <laughs> from my opinion anyway. Um, and, you know, he's very committed as an athlete, and he's going to bring us some right off the edge of the leading edge education on our new product impact plus so everybody have a fantastic saturday thanks for giving us some of your time we appreciate you and have a great weekend bye everyone <laughs>